Thanks for joining us today. It's Ryan Bashauer with Chase and Birdies, my co-host Jonathan Peppy. What's going on, everyone? This is our first episode of Chase and Birdies here. And man, you know, it's it's just kind of funny. Let's talk about this for a minute, right? So we get a lot of questions. How did you guys come up with this? What what's the whole idea behind it? It's what is Chase and Birdies? And Chase and Birdies, dude, we're all chasing birdies, right? If you're a golfer, that's what you want. Mm-hmm. If you are on a good career path, you're chasing birdies in terms of wanting to be successful and continue to grow right? internally. Yeah. So you can apply the phrase chasing birdies to anyone and anything, not just simply golf, but this is a golf podcast. We're here to chat golf. And we want to bring on these other professionals who love golf and share the passion that we have and why. Well, you know, why? Mm-hmm. Dude, it feels good to finally get this thing rolling, huh? It feels good. It's been a long time coming. You know, a lot of people come up with the idea, and we're taking a chance on it, and we hope you guys follow the ride because it's going to be a fun one. We're going to have a lot of good good people on the, on the pod, good conversations, good stories, and uh, see where it takes us. And, again, thank you for joining us. Yeah, no, we appreciate all the support we've had thus far. Again, we've had a lot of people hit us up and – and really express some support. So no, it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun. Our first episode, yeah. And and I think a lot of people are gonna be very excited to hear the the first interview that we're gonna have. Mm-hmm. Um, this gentleman has played in the NHL, mm-hmm. currently playing in the NHL, mm-hmm. absolute stud on the golf course. I can't say that he's right. a good golfer. He's a sure. he's a good golfer, but um, better on the ice. So we're going to have Vincent. Trocheck from the Carolina Hurricanes on our first mm-hmm. episode, and we cannot wait to bring this to you guys. And uh, let us know what you think. Make sure that you follow us on the Instagram at Chasing Birdies. Uh, it's going to be a good starter for the Chasing Birdies episodes, and I hope you folks enjoy the podcast. So, without any further ado, let's bring you Vincent Trocheck. Let's roll this thing right into VT with his tailor made sim to driver. Let's go. As you all know by now, Chase and Birdies is proud to be partners with Holderness and Born. Check them out online at hbgolf.com. Holderness and Born makes fabulous pieces that help you look good on the course, even if your game is not up to par. Check out their new arrivals now for this golf season. Also, head on over to chasingbirdies.com to get some custom Chase and Birdie gear from Holderness and Born. We'll continue to drop these pieces through every season. That's chasingbirdies.com and hold on and born at hbgolf.com. First guest on the inaugural Chasing Birdies episode 101, Vincent Trocheck, close friend of the pod, Pittsburgh native. Thanks for joining us, man. No problem, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, appreciate it. You're busy schedule, you're playing in the NHL, you know, and the last thing you want to do is talk to knuckleheads about golf, but appreciate it. I really do. Happy to be the first guest. So where are you right now? Let's jump right in. Uh, we're in Raleigh right now. Got a couple home games coming up here, so we're just doing the quarantining at home, home and work thing, but at least it's nice, nice out right now. Nice and sunny in Raleigh. Yeah, we don't get that too often in, in your hometown of Pittsburgh, as you know. 64th overall in the 2011 draft. Is that true? Yes. Nice. Good career. Awesome. He's 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 had a nice little steady career. And now the reason we have him on is because of his uh, golf addiction. Yes. Yeah. If, if that's what you call it. <laughs> uh, the guy, it's an addiction. The, the guy loves golf. Yeah. I mean, I text with him on the regular, and uh, 95% of the texts are about golf. So... Uh, what got you started into golf? I think my first year pro, I actually hated golf before that, but started working out with a couple guys in, in the summer that were big golf fanatics. And, and basically, if I wanted to have any friends and hang out with these guys, it was either go golf with them or sit at home by myself while they golf. So mm-hmm. uh, that got me into it. And after a little while, I just kind of became obsessed. I'm very competitive. So whenever I sucked so bad, originally I was frustrated and obviously wanted to get get good as soon as I could. So I was on the grind daily 
and it just quickly turned into an obsession. Well, you've been playing golf for now, what, four years, would you say? Yeah, four or five years. Okay, four or five years, and you're a 3.7 handicap. That's really freaking good. Yeah, that's really good. What do you think? You think any of the hockey, you know, the skill set attributes to your your ability to to be a good golfer? Yeah, some some good, some bad. I think um, like hand eye coordination obviously is is one of the biggest things that you need to have in golf and playing hockey and, and also growing up playing baseball. I think those two things kind of go hand in hand with with the golf swing. So, but then uh, I've talked about this before. The whenever you like take a slap shot in hockey, it's just it kind of it can mess your golf swing up a little bit because when you take a shot, like a slap shot, you're you're aiming your blade open at the at the target and mm-hmm. trying to aim that way. Like do that in golf, which is what I did originally whenever I first started playing. I was trying to aim the ball club face wide open. I played like a 150 yard slice originally, <laughs> so it wasn't it wasn't pretty. Then you try to compensate in golf, and now you're shut in the face. So now you're hitting and a then duck, you're duck hook. Hooking. Duck hooks. Duck hooks. I mean, we all know about those. So, Yeah, uh, we strictly stick a drink in those. Yeah. Yeah, no <sighs> doubt. Incredible. We'll get to that a little bit later. Uh, but, yeah, so then how did you correct that? I mean, again, by trade, you're a hockey player. That's what pays the bills. Mm-hmm. But you're addicted to golf, so you have to switch a little bit whenever you go to the golf course or when you go to the rink. Yeah, it was just a lot. I mean, it was so much different tinkering and trying to figure it out, going to the range and – I had a a lesson with the pro at Neville Wood in Pittsburgh. His name's Kevin Shields. and Solid. He just wanted me to get rid of pretty much everything I was thinking about in the golf swing and just got me to swing freely, like make sure I was finishing my swing, uh, turning the wrists over, finishing it off that way. And Mm -hmm. that was probably three years ago, like when I still kind of sucked. And just his like – the way he was teaching was it was just way more simple, simplify everything, and uh, it kind of changed everything for me. Well, that guy can play, dude. He can strike a ball. He's a phenomenal ball striker. He used to be at Nemecolon at the Woodlands. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, this this was fifteen years ago when I was just getting out of of high school, and so I would always go mosey up there in the summer times and hit balls. And Kevin was there. You know, this is when he was really trying to make it. But uh, he always had a knack for golf, man. He was just exceptionally good. His hands are unbelievable. Yeah, his short game's yeah, great. Yeah, his hands are great. Are you still playing at Nevillewood? Uh, no, I'm actually. I just left Nevillewood. I'm at a club here in in Raleigh called Old Chatham. Oh, love it. Place is unbelievable. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, it's great. So your buddies, I mean, when you guys go out, let's say you have some off days. I mean, COVID has everything screwed up, right? So your schedule probably isn't pretty uh, normal at this point in time. But your friends on the team, do you guys have a group? Do you have a game you you go out head to Old Chatham and play? I mean, is it as competitive internally with your group as it is when you're on the ice? Oh, my God, yeah. The guys guys that that are golfers on this team. For one, our, our team, when it comes to golf, I think if you put us up against any other hockey team in the NHL in a golf game, I think we beat anybody. Really? Oof. Yeah. We have more single-digit handicaps on this team than I've ever seen on a team. Well, you have you. You have Hayden Flurry. You have, yep. is it Brady Shea? Brady Shea is like a plus .5 or something. I mean, those two are phenomenal golfers. Justin Williams just retired. He mm-hmm. is insane. He's a special golfer. He's fun to watch. So what's the, what's the money game that you guys play at, at Old Chatham? when you guys are playing since you have a lot of single digit handicaps on the team we uh willie justin williams introduced this this it's called eeny meeny and it's just Mm -hmm. um so it's two on two and you play like series of three holes and hole number one will be better ball hole number two is combined score and then every third hole there's two matches within within the match so it would be like if me and you are partners, Pep, and, and Bash is partners with someone else, I would play Bash and you would play his partner first on number three. Then on number six, I would play Bash's partner. You would play Bash on that hole. Mm-hmm. And there's two points available on those. So that that was, I mean, when he introduced us to that, it was pretty fun. So we play that pretty consistently. Yeah, it keeps it fresh. Yeah. Every three holes. Yeah, and then you just repeat. Yeah. So, dude, yeah. check us out. So we're playing in Sea, Invi- sea Island Invitational right now. And – I'm coming up short all day 
all day yesterday and all day today. So finally, I get on twenty seven holes short on everything. I get on the twenty seventh hole, twenty eighth hole, twenty eighth hole, and I'm teeing off. I said, "Hey boys," I said, "I need some, I need some action here." All right, I said, "Every shot that I hit inside one thirty, short of the stick, I'm paying you all ten dollars a head." <laughs> and the boys loved it, right? So the first hole out the gate, I hit driver. I got sixty eight yards at a pin. I hit that thing like a buck twenty. I was not leaving a short there. <laughs> I, I, he, he, he's right. that serious. Yeah, he was I'm not like, short all day. The, I'm like, the last nine holes, he wasn't short one time. And then he actually, I mean, he didn't have a birdie through 34 holes. Yeah. Birdie's 35th hole, 36th hole. We're yeah. back in it, boys. So that's it, Vince. That's the whole thing, right? So you get off the golf course, you may have a, not a great round, but let's talk a little bit about birdieing on, on the 17th and then make birdie on the 18th. What's that do to the confidence? It It, it sucks you back in, right? That's the game of golf. That's why everybody loves it. It just keeps you coming back. Yeah. It's, I don't know. There's nothing like it. It's, so. too, it's like a double-edged sword. You either you have a shitty day and you want to get right back out there and kind of wash that out of your brain, or you have a great day and you're like, oh, I could do this. This is easy. I'll come back tomorrow and do it again. Yeah, exactly. And then it goes south, and then it's like, all right, well. But you kind of live in a in a, almost a little golf mecca. You know, you're Raleigh. You're not too far away from Pinehurst, right? What What are you, yeah. you know, an hour? Not even an hour. Yeah, about an hour. So Jonathan obviously has pretty good ties over at Pine Needles. How often are you heading over there? Whenever COVID started and we were kind of in quarantine, I was over there at least three times a week. Yeah. We, yeah, it was just like Pepe's dad lives out there. I was golfing with him. I was – that place is incredible. Pine Needles is incredible. Pinehurst itself, itself is incredible. Everything, um, everything about my, the place. Yeah, it's just it's all golf. Everything there is golf. Had my bachelor party at Pinehurst. Yeah, Place, um, you did have you did have that there, and um, yeah, I mean, even the average golf course in Pinehurst is still really good. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah that's the crazy thing about Pinehurst. There's not really any bad golf in Pinehurst. No. And, yeah, you have Tobacco Road down right down the road. There's a lot that we still haven't played, like Dormy Club. I've Dormy not played. Club, yeah, Dormy Club's really good. Yeah. Uh, and then even and then you get in Raleigh. You got Old Chatham. You got Raleigh Country Club. Oh, we forgot CCNC out in uh, yep. Southern Pines. It's really really good. CCNC is beautiful. Now, I mean, when, when you're playing Old Chatham, Brian and myself have played there. There's mm-hmm. a special treat on the 12th tee box there. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is a special treat. It sure and, is. And uh, when I tell you they're the best apples that I've ever had, they are the best apples that we've ever had. Crunch. Every single time. Every, Every time. time it's the best one. On ice, too, which makes it just that much better. You know what? I played Old Chatham about a year ago, and my caddy is a man by the name of Luke Davis, okay? I don't know if you know Luke. He only loops out there like once or twice, like every three weeks. But he founded this company called Lion Loft. And basically, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so Luke, he's got this company, Lion Loft, and this kid is a really, really good kid. Uh, in fact... We still keep in touch quite regularly, but I told him, I said, when we got on the 12, I said, dude, these apples, there's something about these apples that I, I yeah, can't explain it. So I loaded up my bag on my way to Pinehurst with like six or seven different of these apples, dude. It's like incredible. And then you got that white swan. Didn't somebody kill the swan? Yep, there's two now. And there, well, yeah, so there was one original, mm-hmm. then they got another one, and the second one got a little aggressive and killed the first one. So they got rid of the swans altogether, and then just last summer they purchased two new swans. So we got two swans, Georgie and Jeannie. Georgie and Jeannie love the apples too. So it's wow. love the apples. They live for the apples. They can smell them from a mile away. They do, and and you enjoy your apple from twelve to it's from twelve tea box to thirteen tea box, and they see you coming, and this swan swims across a lake. It doesn't matter how oh, far yeah. away they're coming for that apple core. So every time. Uh, yeah, that's the best treat. And and when you're in Pinehurst, the best treat is a duck hook. I mean, those beers are Dude. to die for. And They're if, phenomenal. And a little cream ale. Cream ale duck hook. And I know we went only to... Only in Southern Pines. Yep, only in Southern Pines. We went there for the for your bachelor party, as as you mentioned, and we indulged in a few of those. So it was it was good. And, and we played Pinehurst number two, Pine Needles, Mid Pines, What's your thoughts on number two? I mean, it, that course is unbelievable, but it's also very hard. Yeah, obviously there's a lot of history, and it's 
a place that everybody that goes to Pinehurst is going there to play. But like you said, it's just so damn hard. It makes like every single shot that even when you hit, think you hit a good shot, the greens are all tabletops. They're all oh my god grainy and just you miss the green there. It's, you're struggling to get bogey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The the graininess in the greens, it's something that you know coming from the Northeast, we're not used to. Even where we are right now, we're like Ryan mentioned, we're at Sea Island. The grain, it's which way is the grain going? Going, you could have a dead straight putt, and if the grain's going right to left, now all of a sudden you have a right to left putt. Yeah, and it's just it's and I can't read it. I can't read grain. Yeah. So yeah, that's something playing in Raleigh will definitely teach you is to be able to read the grain and the shiny side of the grain, grain and the the dull side. It's definitely something that you have to know. I mean, there's times where you think it's 100% going right and the grain's going left and it just holds it out straight. And yeah. Blows your mind every time, but you start to learn. For listeners out there, Vince is about 5'10", maybe a buck 85. I don't know. He typically... Put on there, guys. Okay, all right. See, I know. And you, honestly, you don't look you don't look 185 pounds, man. I mean, maybe... Yeah, I don't know. But most of the hockey players I've played with have been lefties. I know Vince plays righty, which is which is pretty cool. So we're lined up at Pikewood National, and Vince absolutely smothers and smashes a drive. Mm-hmm. And I think I look at him and I'm like, dude, that's pretty pretty well hit. I think it was number seven, part five up the hill. Taylor made driver, I believe, is what you had. What are you hitting now? Yeah, I still have that sim. I just ordered the sim two, but for now, I'm just hitting the sim one max. And what about your irons? Irons right now, Mizuno MP twenties. Everybody's loving these. Oh, they're phenomenal. I love them. I just got them, mm, I guess now it's been probably eight months ago. I got them right when the season ended. I got them, and they're so pure. We were just with somebody that they just ordered Mizuno irons, and I feel like everyone's starting to use Mizuno yeah. irons. They're coming out of the woodwork. Well, Kepka apparently is playing Mizunos. Yeah, did see that. No, I I, I think the tailor made driver this the i haven't had this i haven't had the sim one i'm the m5 but now i went over to that title list again you should probably look into the sim too bud yeah buddy i think i might you know it doesn't really matter for me vince the bottom line is this 260 straight is 260 straight so what the hell does it matter right yeah that's true <laughs> i mean at the end of the day i you know it's all about hitting the fairway for me yeah i love that approach i wish i could hit the fairway consistently yeah all right so let's let's talk a little hockey here so you, if I recall correctly, it was in November of, was it 2019? No, 2018, November 20th of 2018, folks. Vince was chasing a puck behind the net. At this point in time, he was playing for the Florida Panthers. And gruesome injury. If, if, you, if you're a YouTuber or you kind of sit around and do nothing and, and play on the internet, go to YouTube. You can watch this. Not maybe you might not want to watch it, but at any rate, November twentieth, twenty eighteen, Vince chasing a puck ends up fracturing his leg. Basically, broke your whole leg in half. Right? You want to elaborate a little bit? Yeah, it was uh, in Ottawa, uh, chasing a guy behind behind the net, and I, I in on the forecheck. I got my right leg or right foot got stuck in a divot as I was going to hit somebody. We're not talking a divot on a par five, right? We're talking a divot in terms of the ice. <laughs> Yeah, a divot where there's where there's be a no divot. give. A divot where there's not supposed to be a divot. Yeah. Okay. And there, yeah. So the blade of my skate got caught in the divot as I went to hit somebody. So I kind of fell backwards, and my skate stayed planted in the ice, and it just just snapped. So it was a pretty scary moment. Um, Did you go in a shock? Obviously, when it first happened. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Slightly. I mean, it honestly did not hurt that bad. It it uh it kind of just snapped like a twig. So like it was so clean like the break was so clean you could barely even feel it but when it happened like my I tried to stand up right away and my foot just went sideways so Ugh. right then there I, I kind of just went into a little bit of shock and had a hundred different scenarios running through my mind about different injuries that have happened in different sports like that Alex Smith injury um, with the Washington Redskins and I was just kind of hoping that it wasn't to that extent and for the minute and a half or whatever i was laying on the ice waiting for the stretcher to come out it was a lot of stuff going through my mind oh yeah dude that looks brutal so fast forward a little bit you get through the rehab you get through the injury now how does that affect your golf swing back then it was uh, it was pretty brutal i mean it, 
I guess in a sense, it taught me to stay, to get onto my front foot because that was my, yeah. my right foot. So it, it taught yeah. me to get onto my left foot uh, through the swing, but uh, it was pretty miserable. Just rotation sucked. And it caused so much pain through all the tendons in my foot that it was just, you couldn't really use the ground at all whenever I was swinging a, swinging a golf club. So uh, for a little while, it sucked. But for the love of the game, you had to battle it out. Yeah, you got to keep you got to keep fighting through the... The, the injuries. injuries, like you said, whatever you, you in the golf swing, he's got to plant that foot, and who knows which way that could go after the injury, right? Yeah, yeah. So tough one, and you, you know, Jonathan over here has a, has a severe case of gout. <laughs> <laughs> so my my man's popping these pills. I'm like, dude, what is that? He's like, it's my gout medication. Relax, bud. Well, that's too much red meat and a little bit of too much red wine. And we yeah, got fingers so swollen, and and uh, I actually have taken it a step further with my gout medication. I I put a bottle in the golf bag, so it's always there. So, right. um, just stay ready. Right, absolutely. Well, you know, and and for us, I know you obviously are from Pittsburgh, but living in Raleigh, you get to play golf a little more fluently year round. You know, this is it's my second time out in terms of actual playing. Probably Jonathan's first. My first. Yeah. I mean, we, mm-hmm. we'll head down to your neck of the woods in about two weeks. But, dude, you go, you step away from golf for even 30 days, uh, even 10 days, and and do something else within those 10 days, come back, pick club up. Everything is off. Everything. Oh, yeah. It's like you forget. It is definitely not like riding a bike. Yeah, it's not like riding a bike. And the short game is, the timing is unbelievable on a short game. Yeah. That's uh, the deal. It's tough to get back. Yeah, I mean, so when you're around the green, what's your what's your go-to wedge shot? We go and bump and run. We 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 taken a fifty-four well, out. Recently, since being in Raleigh, I think like down here you really need to learn how to hit that bump and run. And I actually just started trying to use a hybrid for like a hybrid chip from off the green. Interesting. The grain really, the grain really holds the ball here it, it rolls like so much better whenever you use a hybrid so started using that a little bit but i use a 60 consistently even if it is for a bump and run just put it back in the stance a little bit um hands forward yeah hands forward ball back that's a bash hour shot right there it uses yeah. 58 degree everywhere wow i yeah. like that get some spin on it too well right and if you're comfortable enough to do that i personally go 60 degree I flop everything. You like it, though. Yeah, you're handsy. Flopping. Definitely handsy. All right, strength of your game. What are we looking at? Usually my driver is my most consistent club. All right, all right. Yeah, that's, that's I an would important say that. part of the game. I mean, that I've sets seen. up the whole hole. So when you get a good driver, the rest is easy. I mean, that, and, and that's the thing. Bash struggled today. I mean, he, he hit the driver all over the map. Buddy, I hit it all over the map. But I mean, I also didn't make a dang putt. And at the end of the day, you got to make the putts. The ball's got to get That's in the hole. Strength too. Mm-hmm. Struggling in all regards to that. I mean, putting is is key. It's key. Yeah. And, yeah. And you're using what? Bettinardi putter, or did you switch, or what, what, what are we using now? Yeah, I'm using Bettinardi putter right now. I just ordered a spider, though. I'm gonna test it out, see how it goes. Uh-oh. So Bettinardi might be on the shelf. We had uh, we had a nice little trip planned over potentially to Ireland this year. And uh, oh. Vince was was a part of this trip, got kebobbed. Obviously why, right? But so now that this is canceled, you know, what do you have planned? Are you going anywhere with anyone? Are you going to uh, – when's the NHL season even ending? In July? Yeah, the cup finals will be over July 10th-ish. And Carolina, I mean, you guys are – you're playing, having a good year, so you guys might be going the whole way. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, we got a, we got a really good team here, so it's definitely a possibility. Does your coach? Let me ask you this, because like he wants you guys to be focused on hockey, right? Right. But he knows you guys are all nutsos about golf, mm-hmm. and any opportunity you all get to go hit the ball, you're gonna go chase it. So what's he? What, what, what's what's he say about it? Don't golf on days off. Well, right now it's different. I mean, we really can't leave home during like the COVID protocol, so nobody's really going to golf. But he played for twenty years. I mean, he knows what guys are going to do on days off and stuff. So 
I mean, he likes the game of golf as well. So if he if he had the chance, he'd be doing the same. That's the thing, though. Right now, it's such a unique situation with COVID because you can't really do anything. Even if you have no. two or three days off, you're not doing anything because you guys Especially are like under right now. With the, the league's protocols now are so tight. Like right, it's literally home and work, and that's it. Right, you and guys on the are, road. You stay in the hotel. You can't go out to eat. Can't do anything. Like, yeah, you guys are under strict. a microscope, and if you make one wrong move it, it hurts the team in the long run so uh yep, it's best definitely. just to wait till may or june to peg it up and and uh i tell yeah. you what vince you gotta take hillary and the kids and when you get done with uh you're going back to pittsburgh this year right in the off season yep take yep. them down to the Greenbrier. i know that's a trip that i definitely want to make you play the old white tpc which is phenomenal and then we'll get you over there on the sneed at the sporting club phenomenal Dude, you'll have an absolute blast. And maybe Pep will meet you, maybe me. Maybe maybe we'll get a couple other guys roll down and play. That's a trip we've been talking about for so long. I really want to go out there. Green Bryant, I've heard nothing but great things. Oh, it's unbelievable. Yeah. And, and the sporting club is to die for. I'll tell you what, though, guys. i gotta I got to be honest here for a second. I had never been to Sea Island before, ever. You know, I think Zach Johnson and Keith Mitchell and a couple other. Pat and Kazire. Yeah. I think Jonathan Bird's here. Dude, this place, Vince, is laid out. Mm-hmm. I've uh, seen the pictures. They look incredible. Yeah, I mean, it's insane. It's, wow. Seaside course is second to none. The wind's whipping constantly, so there's never a break in the wind. Yeah. All Bermuda. How about the old boat in the middle of the ocean? It's on the side. Yeah, cargo ship out there. 5,000 cars still on this boat. They're taking them off one by one, cutting the boat in half, section, cars off. You sit there and you watch this. You're, you're hitting wedge shots. And, and they're taking cars off this boat. It looks like th- there's a, a music. What happened to capsize? The guy, apparently, from what we've heard, uh, potentially I might start giving tours, $25 <laughs> boat ride tours out around the boat, but that's a side business. It's a huge but ship. But apparently it's a huge ship that, that the guy lost where he was, was not deep enough, and it just rolled on him. And there were 45 people on the boat. Everyone lived. But all these cars are in there. And there's, I think they said something like 5,000 or 5,500 cars in this boat. So they have to oh, do eight God. sections. And you should see, there's 50, what do you think, 15, 20 boats watching them oh, yeah. all day long in case something falls under the water because they got to get it out of the water. Yeah. So, you know, they played the RSM Classic here where we are, uh, which is was in November. And this ship was called the Golden Ray. It caught fire and capsized just off the shore where we are on St. Simmons Island. I'm sorry, St. Simon's Island. Dude, incredible. It's like I said, they should just leave the dang thing there, and it would become like a almost a Pearl Harbor-type artifact. Like, hey, museum, let's go check it out. Let's go check out the yo-yo who capsized this boat. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, but yes, we highly recommend this place. I mean, Ryan and I are enjoying each other's company here. It's more of a family spot. Georgia, Georgia's undercut. Like, Georgia's got a lot of good golf. Well, yeah, so we're actually going to get into that a little bit about uh, a little spot in, in Georgia. Let's just hop into the, uh, the the tap-in segment, which is brought to you by 44 Concierge. They are the premier concierge company for professional athletes. Started by current NHL vet Nate Thompson, 44 makes sure that all the moving parts of an athlete's life are organized and handled. So you just worry about scoring the winning goal or draining that birdie putt. 44 makes sure their athletes enjoy more and worry less. So go check them out at 44concierge.com, which, funny enough, Vincent Trocek is a 44 Concierge client. Yeah. So you've firsthand experienced them. Yes, I have. Can you attest to their greatness? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Nate did a great job making them. Jamie Carroll, who, who is uh, kind of the guy who is behind the mask, he, he does everything. He, anytime you call or text, he responds within a second. So uh, he's been great. So, all right, let's get into the tap-in segment. We're going to say say something. You tell us what first comes well, to your wait, mind. Listen, time out, bud. I mean, pump the brakes. Let me just explain this real quick, all right? The, <laughs> the, the tap-in segment, it's local to Chase and Birdie podcast, okay? So, basically, Jonathan will ask one question, one line to the guest, and the guest has to reply with, you know, what the, what they think of. So, this is our, our segment called the tap-in segment. There you go. Can I start now? Good. Bud. Am I allowed? You're loud. All right. Sounds I just good. wanted people to know what the heck you were going to be doing. All right. All right. Augusta National. Golf Mecca. 
Mm. Golf Mecca. So I have this conversation with the buddies all the time. How much would it take for you to play there? What's what's the, the budget to, to play Augusta National? Somebody comes to you and says, hey, how much you want to play Augusta for? What are you telling them? There's a lot. I mean, <laughs> Hillary's not that listening. depends. Yeah. Uh, so we'll put a range, what, between 20 and 30 grand? Yeah, I'd pay 20 grand for sure. I think that's fair. It's very fair. If someone said, hey, guys, tomorrow, foursome, 80 grand, pony it up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, for sure. All right. Patrick Reed. A lot of controversy. Cheater. Yeah, there's a lot of controversy with him right now. He is a uh, cheater, I think. Probably after me saying that, he'll never come on this episode on this show. So that's completely fine. But he, uh, okay. the things that he does, just he's always going to be labeled a cheater, even if he does the right thing. He's going to be a cheater. Of course. Why shouldn't he? Yeah, it just hurts for guys that are also like guys on tour are coming out, basically saying the same thing. It's, if they're around it and they're seeing it and they're saying it, then it must be. Mm-hmm. And then they said he he's 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 running a, a second Twitter handle or Twitter account. And oh like, yeah, yeah, I heard that. Too. The old burner handle. Yeah, no like, idea. But yeah. how about just put it all out there? Yeah. Well, dream golf trip. Well, I think the dream golf trip was this this supposed to be this Ireland trip that we had planned that is mm-hmm. now canceled. Well, we'll I think catch Ireland would be phenomenal. Yeah, we'll catch you in twenty twenty two on that. So. Yeah. The Guinness, Guinness factory. Yeah. The golf. It's just all of it together. Yeah. No, that'd be cool. The Guinness factory. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a big Guinness guy. Are, Are you yeah? really, Vince? Oh, yeah. My, it's my favorite beer, actually. You don't strike me as the Guinness type, man. Really? No. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Duck hooks. Oh, yeah. Duck hooks, beers, a little bit of bourbon. That's the kind of guy that. I see you along the lines of Matt Barkowski with a little bit of Miller Lights. Miller Light? Yeah. <laughs> No, uh, not anymore. Those days are past. Oh shoot! Yeah, you you've gone up the ladder. I get it. All right, you got <laughs> one more round of golf left in your life before you kick the old bucket. Dream foursome. Who are you playing with, and where are you playing with them? Oh, uh, Mario Lemieux, mm. Tiger Woods, obviously, mm-hmm. and I think Will Ferrell. And we're playing Augusta National. Hello. That's, oh, Will that's Ferrell would be awesome. He Will would... Ferrell would keep it loose for sure. Yeah. And then the goat, of course. Both the goats. Well, Lemieux, unbelievable. And he's a Lemieux. great player in, in his own right on the golf course. Jordan yeah. just will – it's not that Jordan's good at golf. It's just the amount of money that he's playing for gets everybody else work. Yeah, you, you're uncomfortable when that's you're playing the idea against... behind it, though, I guess. Yeah. And, and I respect that, but I don't have that, so we're never gonna have to worry yeah. about that. Yeah, I mean, you know, these guys, it's a different level. Yep. So Vince, what do you have planned the rest of the week? It's it's Tuesday here, so you're getting ready to. You got a game tomorrow, or what? What? Yeah, I got a game tomorrow. Playing the old team, playing the Florida Panthers tomorrow at five o'clock. Are you? Yep. Well, good luck, game man. Friday, Saturday. Thank you. Yeah, we're cramming a lot of games in here this year, so we're about. 14 games in, we got 42 left, and that's crazy. Only a couple months to do it. And then you got you got a new baby, and and you got Leo and and Hillary. You got two dogs. I mean, it's it's a it's a crazy schedule for you right now. Yeah, full house, crazy schedule. It's crazy times here, boys. That's that's crazy good. Time. Hey, that's good. And then on top of it, your lovely wife Hillary lets you go play golf whenever you want after the season, of course. Yeah, for the most part. How many uh, how many rounds? An absurd amount. Uh, not, I think I was around 90. 90. In okay. 2020. So, you know my father, Gerald. Mm-hmm. Uh, 232 rounds of golf in 2020. Unbelievable. That's just insane. The guy's an absolute legend. In, in an hour and a half. Yeah. Diet Cokes, two Diet Cokes. And he does it. Hour and a half. Phenomenal. We're done. And then he, I, strive to get to, I strive to get there at one point in my yeah, life. Yeah. I think we all do. I think we all do. I mean... There's not too many things in life I love other uh, as much as my family, but golf is is up there. Yeah, not, it's not yeah. quite there because my wife will listen to this. But. <laughs> yeah, whatever. But we can't thank you enough, man, to ha- to be on again. Uh, it's our first episode. We appreciate you coming on. 
uh, you know, keep chasing those birdies. Chasing those pucks, too, man. You're having a good year. Well, yeah. He's having a good year, man. Yeah. Let's get the on the ice and, and on the green. Yeah. Chase them. And uh, for you Instagram lovers, uh, trocheck underscore 21 is Vince's handle. Be sure to give him a follow. And um, give his mixtape a little like too. Huh? Give the mixtape. My man puts out these mixtapes, you know, <laughs> the Tro check mixtape. Uh, really good for the range, range sesh. But dude, appreciate the time, Vince. Also, don't forget, folks, head on over to linksold.com as we said earlier. Chase and Birdie's 25 for 25% off your order. That's linksoul.com. Chase and Birdie's 25 and uh, get yourself some good stuff. But uh, Vince, cannot thank you enough, man. Appreciate your time. Of course. And uh, I look forward to, to seeing you out on the course sometime soon. Yeah, All right, buddy. Thank you, boys. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, thanks so much. We'll see you. Thank you to Vincent Trocheck for joining us on our very first episode, Chase and Birdies. Looking forward to our next guest, Kerry Fraser of the National Hockey League. He was a referee for a very, very long time. Has a lot of interesting stories, I'm sure, and we cannot wait. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Thanks, Vince, again. Stay tuned for the next episode 102 of Chase and Birdies with Kerry Fraser. Thanks again.